President Biden is in the great white north to shore up relations with one of America's strongest allies. This is Mr. Biden's first trip to Canada as president. Canada is one of America's top trade partners and largest energy supplier. The agenda includes national security, migration, the war in Ukraine, and climate change. Eric Farnsworth joins me now from Washington. He is a vice president at the Council of the Americas, which aims to promote free trade and open markets in the Western Hemisphere. Eric, thank you for joining us. You wrote a piece in Barron's titled, Canada shouldn't be an extra thought in it. So what do, you, what do you mean by that? Let's pause there. Well, too often we in the United States uh, take Canada for granted. We have to be honest about that. But Canada is a strategic partner. It's our top trade partner in the world. It's our top supplier of energy during a time of energy insecurity, perhaps after Russia's uh, invasion of Ukraine. It's a co-guarantor of the world's largest undefended border, the U.S. border with Canada. And it's a country that uh, shares burdens with us in NATO and uh, global peacekeeping efforts. So this is really a country that uh, is important to the U.S economic uh, security and national security. And uh, I think the president's visit is really going to highlight that and showcase uh, the relationship. Let's pick through some of those items that you mentioned. Let's talk about energy first. How does the relationship between the two countries change, strengthen or otherwise in the wake of the Russian invasion in Ukraine? Well, it's a huge opportunity, frankly, for Canada to provide more energy onto global markets, particularly to the United States, but elsewhere as well, Europe uh, in particular. Uh, the challenge, of course, is that the Biden administration came in uh, very forthrightly uh, promoting the global climate change agenda, and I think that is absolutely relevant in the context of Canada, which is an oil and gas uh, producer and supplier. And so uh, there's some obvious tension there. Uh, but uh, at a moment of uh, energy insecurity, when Europe requires uh, increased resources and, and others around the world do as well, that would seem to be at least a short-term opportunity for Canada. Uh, it's something that I think that people are talking about. I think that the president uh, will raise that or it will be raised with the president by the prime minister. You mentioned the border that uh, Canada and America share. People think of the border challenges often in America's southern border, the United States' southern border, I should say. Help us think through the border challenges, and, and I gather there's going to be an agreement on asylum, perhaps, coming out of this deal. How should we think about uh, the border issues uh, with Canada? Yeah, it's really complicated. It's perhaps not as complicated as what the U.S. faces uh, with Mexico for a variety of reasons, but uh, it's still complicated. Uh, the word is that uh, there will be an agreement on asylum uh, that the United States and Canada will uh, announce uh, when the president uh, is there. Uh, but these are issues that have to be managed uh, because uh, they are always with us by definition, and they require cooperation also by definition. And I think uh, the challenge is trying to keep the borders open uh, for the trade that has to come uh, across, uh, really for both of our economies, while at the same time uh, being protected against things like uh, you know illegal activities, including fentanyl. It's not just a U.S. issue. It's not just a Mexican issue. Canada is facing fentanyl issue as well, illegal narcotics. Uh, terrorism in the past, et cetera. Uh, but you also have a crush of uh, asylum seekers, many coming from Latin America, but many from other countries around the world as well. And those uh, put real burdens on uh, officials who are trying to do the right thing, but are oftentimes overwhelmed. So you need to have uh, processes and cooperation in place to deal with these uh, very relevant issues that touch people uh, where they live. And, and, and so they become very personal, very difficult from that perspective, but cooperation there is the key. Finally, in, in the Barron's piece, you also mentioned that uh, China is meddling with Canada. Um, what did you mean by that? And obviously, uh, the, the uh, surveillance balloon um, flew over uh, Canada, and um, I would imagine that's also part of the conversation vis-a-vis -vis China in these talks. Yeah, that very much is. In fact, uh, again, reports indicate that there will be an agreement for Canada to increase spending uh, to upgrade NORAD, the uh, North American Aerospace Defense Cooperative Mechanism. That needs to happen. Uh, but most Americans think about NORAD only around Christmas in terms of the Santa Claus tracker. But it's a very real uh, and very important strategic asset that our, our governments share. And this is what uh, protects uh, North American airspace 
Uh, and, you know, when Chinese balloons uh, come over both of our countries, things like the protection of airspace becomes uh, directly relevant as well. Uh, but having said that, uh, yeah, news reports indicate that China has meddled in uh, Canadian uh, elections and uh, democratic processes uh, the way they have uh, in other countries around the world. That's something not just to be aware of, but to reject. Uh, healthy democracies uh, really have to uh, maintain the confidence of their people. Uh, and if there are interactions or meddling from outside, that becomes problematic for all of us. I imagine that the United States and Canada are all already talking about a very robust uh, relationship in terms of cyber and in terms of uh, defensive uh, uh, techniques to be able to counteract some of that. Indeed, it's been going on for a long time. All right, Eric Farnsworth from the Council of the Americas, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.